Hi guys, welcome to Cake and It Special with me, Lauren. So a few weeks ago I had an operation on my hand and I'm still not healed enough to be able to work with food. So I thought this week I would talk about the 10 basic tools that I use on pretty much every cake. So basically these are the 10 tools that I couldn't be without. So here we go. First up, I want to talk about my cutting mat. This is actually a craft mat. It has two sides and I only really use the one to be honest, but the measurements on it help me out a lot. Um, so I can make sure that I'm cutting things accurately. I can keep my line straight when I'm cutting into fondant and also it protects my counter because I used to just cut straight onto this and it used to drive my husband insane. I also find that fondant and modeling paste, etc., doesn't stick to this the same way as it does to the counter. I don't know if it's because it doesn't hold as much heat so it doesn't get as sticky, I'm not sure, but this is definitely something that I couldn't be without. Next up is my turntable. This is actually a Lazy Susan, but this is massively helpful, especially if you are doing something where it's really not ideal to have to stop, turn your cake, stop, turn your cake. So painting or icing a cake or even piping so you can just keep your hands steady and then just turn your turntable so you don't have to stop turn stop turn it's it's really is brilliant to have so now my knife um i really couldn't be without a good knife um i got this one from zoe's fancy cakes when she opened up her very first shop in leeds um when I first started cake decorating, I just used to pinch knives from my mom, you know, whatever she had. Um, and when you're trying to cut into fondant, so say you're trying to cut the excess fondant from around a cake, if your knife isn't sharp enough, it will just get stuck and it'll end up dragging and stretching out your fondant. Whereas these, well, any sharp knife makes for a really nice clean cut. Um, so definitely recommend getting yourself a sharp knife. I have a knife sharpener as well to make sure that this one is always at its best. Rolling pin. These come in different sizes um, but because I can only pick 10 tools I didn't want to pick the small one because it is easy to roll out small things with a big pin but it's not easy to roll out big things with a small pin. So I go for non-stick rolling pins for obvious reason, things don't stick to it. Um, and I love these, I really do. And they come with these rubber things that go on the ends so you can make sure that you are rolling your fondant to the right width all over, which is, which is brilliant. Also, because this is a non-stick pin, um, that means I don't have to put as much corn flour on my work surface for rolling it out, which means that my fondant doesn't dry out as quickly. Number five is my offset spatula. So again, these come in many different sizes and shapes. You can get really big ones like this, or you can get flat ones. You can get ones that are like pointed at the end for like mixing paint and things like that. But all in all, I really just use this one. Um, I find with the bigger ones, I don't have as much control. And I don't like it. I can't tell if it's dipping in. Um, so I pretty much just use this one for everything. I know a lot of people do like to use the bigger ones or the straight edge ones um, But I think because I've just gotten so used to using the one over the years I do own the others and I do use them on occasion, but I've gotten so used to using this one over the years Well this this kind I have a few of these um, that I've just I've just learned to do, do everything with this one um, so yeah, I definitely couldn't be without this. Number six is the fondant smoother. Again, these come in different shapes. Ideally, you would have two, um, but I can only choose 10 things, so I'll have to make do with one. Um, these come in different shapes as well. You can get rectangle ones, or you can even get ones that are in like an L shape to do the corners with. Um, but if you are just starting out and you don't want to spend an awful lot of money, this is like the all round jobby you know this one will pretty much do everything you need it to do you may just have to be patient if you're only using one to get them corners right but you can do it 
And also, if you are just starting out and you don't really want to spend money on one of these at all, what you can do is get some fondant. Let me show you. What you can do is use some fondant and make sure that when you need it, all the creases are at the back. And then you've got a perfectly smooth surface on the top. And then you can just pinch it at the back to hold on to it. And then you can use that as your smoother and it works really, really well. So if you don't want to spend your money just yet on some smoothers, then this is definitely something to try. So number seven is the paintbrush. Now to me, paintbrushes are one of them things that I can never have enough of. I absolutely love them. I have tons, so it was really difficult for me to narrow it down to just one. But the one that I've gone for is a soft rounded edge, a small one. All paintbrushes have their uses. You don't want a paintbrush where the bristles are too hard because that could indent your fondant. Um, if you've only got one paintbrush, you don't want it to be an itty bitty one that you paint on eyelashes with because that could take you days to do some things. Um, you're gonna find it really, really difficult to have one paintbrush that does all the jobs perfectly. But if you could only buy one, I would suggest this. Um, if you are working with rainbow dust or edible powders and you only want a light coating, this is perfect. But because it is a rounded brush, you're not gonna leave harsh lines in anything. Like I say, it's, it's gonna be impossible to find one brush that does all your jobs, but I think this one would be a good one to start with if you're only wanting to buy the one. In fact, I think this comes in a set of two, so this may have been pointless. <laughs> E10 9 are both sculpting tools. So for the balling tool, I use this for either petals when I'm making roses, so you can soften out the edges and fill them. Or when I'm making my toppers, I use them for eye sockets or creating little dimples. There's loads of things you can use these for. I think I pretty much use this on every single topper I do. Um, I prefer the metal balling tool because they don't have the seams that you get on the plastic ones, which can indent whatever it is you're doing, and that's not ideal. So definitely go for a metal one if you can. They are heavier, but the more you get to use them, you just get used to it. You don't even really think about it. And then the veining tool. I like to say that this is like a, a pen for fondant. You can just mark out whatever you need with it. I use this pretty much every day. Um, I use it to score in lines and to make little points. At the top, it's got quite a sharp ridge for the lines that you want to score into your cakes or your toppers. It's just, I, I don't think I could be without this one. Then last but not least is my cornflower pouch. Now you can make these much, much cheaper than this costs, but I really, really like this one. Um, it's really easy to keep clean. It lets out the right amount of cornflour every time because I, what I used to do is just have the box of cornflour and then just try and sprinkle it as much as I needed each time. And obviously that never worked. And I would just be surrounded by a big cloud of cornflour all the time. And I would just waste so much. So I think in the cornflour I have not wasted in the process, I have saved this. You just take the top off, put your cornflour in there. This needs filling up and screw it back on. And then you screw the white top and then there you go. It's perfect. It really is brilliant. And the fact that it's so easy to keep clean is very important to me. So that's it for this week, guys. I'm sorry I didn't have a tutorial to show you. Hopefully next week I will be able to work with food again and I will actually have a tutorial to show you. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel. All the videos aren't usually this bad <laughs> and I hope I've done a okay job talking you through my top 10 couldn't work without cake tools. And I will see you next week. Thanks guys, bye.